In the annals of true crime history, the name Richard Angelo stands out as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the healthcare system. Angelo's story is a harrowing tale of a man who used his position of trust to commit unspeakable acts of violence. In this video, we delve deep into the life and crimes of Richard Angelo, seeking to understand the motivations behind his heinous actions and the profound impact they had on his victims and the community at large. The quiet town of Lindenhurst, New York, nestled on Long Island's south shore, was a typical suburban community. Residents trusted the local hospital, Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center, to provide top-notch health care. Little did they know that within the walls of this seemingly benevolent institution, a sinister presence was lurking. That presence was Richard Angelo, a licensed practical nurse who would go on to terrorize the hospital and its patients. Richard Angelo was born on December 29, 1962, in Bethpage, New York. His early life appeared unremarkable, with no overt signs of the darkness that would later consume him. As a child, he displayed an interest in health care, which led him to pursue a career in nursing. He enrolled in the nursing program at the State University of New York at Farmingdale, where he obtained his license as a practical nurse. Upon graduating, Richard Angelo began working at Good Samaritan Hospital in 1986. His role as a nurse meant that he was entrusted with the lives of the patients in his care. To the outside world, he appeared dedicated and compassionate, a healthcare worker committed to easing the suffering of those in his charge. However, beneath this facade, Angelo was harboring a dark secret. It was in 1987 that the first hints of something sinister emerged. Patients at Good Samaritan Hospital began to experience unexpected, life-threatening medical crises. Alarmingly, these incidents seemed to occur when Richard Angelo was on duty. As the number of unexplained medical emergencies rose, hospital staff and administrators grew increasingly concerned. Nurse Angelo's actions raised suspicions among his colleagues. The hospital administration, led by the astute chief of medicine Dr. Peter Kelly, began to investigate these mysterious incidents. The hospital initiated a detailed review of patient charts, medications administered, and shifts worked by Angelo. What they discovered was shocking, a pattern of unexplained medical emergencies, all linked to Angelo's presence. Richard Angelo's weapon of choice was insulin, a hormone used to regulate blood sugar levels. Insulin, when administered improperly or to individuals who do not require it, can lead to dangerously low blood sugar levels, resulting in seizures, coma, and death. Angelo, who had access to medication dispensing systems, used insulin to induce these medical crises in unsuspecting patients. As investigators delved deeper into Angelo's actions, they uncovered a chilling truth. He was responsible for at least eight deaths and numerous other near-fatal incidents. The victims ranged in age from their 30s to their 80s, and all had been targeted seemingly at random. The community was left in shock, grappling with the realization that someone they had entrusted with their lives had betrayed that trust in the most horrific way possible. In 1989, Richard Angelo was arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder. The trial that followed was a media sensation, drawing widespread attention from the public and the press. Angelo's defense attempted to cast doubt on the evidence, but the sheer weight of the case against him was insurmountable. The jury found him guilty on multiple counts of murder and assault. One of the most perplexing aspects of the case was the question of motive. Why would a healthcare professional sworn to do no harm commit such heinous acts? As the trial unfolded, it became clear that Richard Angelo had a disturbing need for attention and recognition. He reveled in the drama and chaos that surrounded the medical emergencies he caused, often positioning himself as the heroic figure who had come to the rescue. This desire for recognition, it seemed, drove him to commit these atrocious acts. The impact of Richard Angelo's crimes on the Lindenhurst community and the healthcare industry at large cannot be overstated. Patients and their families who had once trusted medical professionals were left with profound feelings of betrayal and mistrust. Hospitals across the country were forced to reevaluate their security protocols and medication dispensing systems to prevent similar incidents. In 1990, 
Richard Angelo was sentenced to 61 years to life in prison for his crimes. He is currently incarcerated at the Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, New York. Despite his incarceration, Angelo's legacy continues to haunt those who were affected by his actions.